Insulin is a life-saving medication for patients with diabetes, so it makes sense that there is such outrage over the high and rising price of insulin. But effective solutions for lowering prices require an understanding of who is making the money. Manufacturers develop the product. The product then goes to wholesalers who transport it to pharmacies. Pharmacies sell the product and provide consulting to patients. There are two other players involved, health plans who provide insurance to the patient and pharmacy benefit managers or PBMs who work on behalf of the health plan to negotiate formulary placement and contracts with the manufacturer and help manage the relationship with the pharmacy. But the way money flows through this system is much more complicated. When an insured patient has a prescription for an insulin product, they pay their copay at the pharmacy counter. They also pay a premium to their health plan. The pharmacy purchases the insulin from the wholesaler who pays the manufacturer. Meanwhile, the PBM reimburses the pharmacy and the health plan reimburses the PBM. The manufacturer pays the wholesaler prompt pay discounts and distribution fees. They redeem copay coupons and pay fees and discounts to the pharmacy and pay admin fees and rebates for formulary placements to the PBM. The PBM passes a share of rebates to the health plan. Through analysis published in JAMA Health Forum, researchers at the USC Schaefer Center for Health Policy and Economics found that while the total cost to the healthcare system remained relatively stable between 2014 and 2018, middlemen in the distribution process Wholesalers, pharmacies, pharmacy benefit managers, and health plans receive more than half of the net expenditures accrued from the sale of insulin, up from 30% in 2014. While the share going to manufacturers has dropped 33%, unfortunately, patients have not benefited from this redistribution. If policymakers really want to fix the problem of rising insulin costs, they'll have to look at everyone involved.